you know, they're telling me now it's time for me to go. Um, and they're asking me if I can get as many of the dogs and cats out with me, so. Hi, a roller coaster of emotions is the only way I can describe what we're going through here and everywhere else. If you've been following the plea of Pence Farden in Afghanistan, the evacuation of all his animals and all his staff, Operation Ark, you're probably glued to the screen since all of this began. I have never felt like this about any rescue or any military operation. This video I made, Ben was, uh, was at, the, at the airport doors. He was there waiting to be let in. And then hours pass and hours pass and thousands of people trying to get in. He had to start giving water to the dogs that were in boxes. They were about to boil themselves. So it was becoming a desperate situation. And then things got even more desperate. Two explosions rocked the area. 13, 13 Marines died and over 200 civilians. It was a terrorist attack by ISIS-K. Massive chaos, and then Penn decided, we can't be here anymore. Let's go back to shelter. So they went back to Nausea. I was inside Kabul airport. I'd go inside the perimeter with my team. Um, we were 300 meters inside. Um, it's taken us 36 hours um, to achieve that. I had all my staff members, all of the dogs and cats, 300 meters inside the perimeter. Um, we've gone through hell to get there. Um, we've had Taliban cock their weapons and point them at our faces. We got inside that airfield um, and just before that horrendous attack, we were told that Joe Biden had changed the policy on who is allowed into the airfield. And so my staff even though they'd been given approval by the British government, the Taliban wouldn't accept their paperwork because they'd been told they could only allow people in with a physical passport with a visa in it. And we were at gunpoint again, so twice today I've had somebody poke his AK in my face. Um, we were forced to leave the airfield, and just as we did, that's when those two, I think, attacks, or one, I'm, like I said, I'm not sure to watch all the reports, um, happened across at the Abbey Gate and then all hell broke loose at the airport circle which is where I was which is probably I suppose about a mile from where the explosions across at the Abbey Gate were and we had um, Taliban there firing into the air one let off a full magazine on automatic from his AK-47 right next to the window of our bus where we had women and children in um, and as we're trying to then flee from the airport we're getting tear gassed so we're trying to drive the vehicle while we obviously can't see anything. It was just the most horrific thing. We've all managed to make it back to obviously our animal shelter here. Um, we obviously then hear in the news reports of actually, you know, those deaths occurring at the Abbey Gate. Um, and sadly, obviously I've heard, you know, there's obviously US soldiers involved um, in, the, in the casualties. What do you think is going to happen now? My mission to get them out of Afghanistan has just ended because Joe Biden stopped it. I can't overrule the president of the United States. He has said what paperwork that they need um, to obviously be able to get into the airfield. The Taliban obviously control the outer parts of the airfield. So I, I, there's nothing I can do. Um, you know, we talked to the staff when we came back here. I mean, uh, the emotion that everybody had, you know, all came out when we finally got back here this evening. You know, they're telling me now it's time for me to go. Um, they don't think a foreigner is going to be welcome here, um, you know, on the ground once obviously the, the West has left. Um, and they're asking me if I can get as many of the dogs and cats out with me. So, um, yeah, uh, I can't take them with me because I can't get them now past those Taliban checkpoints because of the regulation that's come down. At that point, the situation looked desperate so many, so many injured. I mean, the whole thing just made things so much more complicated. Then somehow the following morning, Ben heads to the airport again. And this time makes it, makes it. He is inside the airport. He is, he was authorized to fly and they helped them get the dogs inside as well. The dogs, but not the staff. I can't, I can't imagine how Pence must be feeling. He vowed not to leave behind any of the staff and any of the animals, 
and in the end, he didn't have a choice. He had to leave the staff behind. So they helped him carry the, the dogs and the cats inside the, inside the cargo area of the plane. And last thing I heard was that he was on his way out, but the plane was still in Afghanistan waiting to fly. I don't have the latest update. Uh, it's really difficult to follow the whole thing. Ben is not updating properly, as we all can agree. Poor guy, he's got enough on his plate. I mean, this is the this is the, the journey from hell. You know, I'm used to traveling with dogs to deliver dogs to their homes. Always two, three dogs, four, five sometimes. But to travel with this amount of animals under these conditions on your own, on a war zone, never heard anything like this. Definitely. This guy deserves an OBE, uh, uh, a special decoration uh, in the UK. I mean, he should be knighted. What an amazing, amazing guy. You know, he's an amazing man. If anyone can, can get them out, even with the circumstances as they are at the moment, it's Penn Farthing. I would never underestimate his courage and his determination to do that. We don't know what's going to happen yet. It looks pretty positive. They're on the plane or they are on the air on the way to, to Tashkent in Uzbekistan. And from there, I suppose, to the UK. I don't, even, I don't know how the dogs are. I mean, sometimes when we take these trips, we're worried about the dogs being five, six hours on a crate. And now these poor animals, they're having to spend days and days on end. I'm surprised none of them has died. I mean, with this heat in Afghanistan, it was the, the most logical thing that uh, should happen. Anyway, it looks good for Pan. It looks good for the animals. Apparently they are all on the flight, but they've had to leave the staff behind. These beautiful pets, these beautiful assistants, everyone that has been really doing all this work at Nausat, they've all been left in the hands of the Taliban. <sighs> I mean, this is the kind of guy that I'm sure will bow to go back and get the staff back. I mean, to, to the UK. I don't think he's going to leave them behind. But uh, I think for now, he had to get out and so did the animals. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for following this story through my channel. I mean, I just felt that uh, if I lend the nearly <clears throat> the nearly 100,000 people that this channel has to pen might be a good thing. And I think it has, and I think it has. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for being here. We continue glued to the screen. Fingers crossed for pen. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. There are thousands of thousands of people who are gonna be left here who have every right in the world to get on a flight and come home.